Now, there's a fine ship for you. HMS Victory, Nelson's flagship at the Battle of Trafalgar. One of the glories of the Royal Navy. I don't suppose Lord Nelson in his wildest dreams ever imagined that one day she would uh, be the inspiration for a comic opera. Well, then how did it happen? Well, one fine April day in the year 1878, Mr. William S. Gilbert, the famous dramatist, visited Portsmouth, Britain's great naval base. He um, took luncheon with a high-ranking naval officer, and together they visited the victory. Gilbert started taking notes and making little sketches of the rigging and the quarterdeck and, and so on. Oh, he was, by the way, a very talented artist and used to illustrate his plays with, with cute little drawings of the characters and so forth. Well, now, why was he so interested in HMS Victory? Had he already the idea of writing a comic opera about the Royal Navy? Or did it suddenly come to him that that afternoon in Portsmouth or what? Well, we don't know the answer, but we do know that um, he right away got in touch with his composer friend, Sir Arthur Sullivan. And so HMS Pinafore came into being. Pinafore is the most light-hearted of comic operas, but it caused quite a political storm when it was first performed. Uh, the character of Sir Joseph Porter, the first Lord of the Admiralty in the play, was rather too closely based on the real-life first Lord, Mr. W. H. Smith. Smith started his own career in his father's news agency in the Strand. He later entered Parliament. He never served at sea. Now, his appointment by Prime Minister Disraeli as the first Lord of the Admiralty was a purely political one. So when Gilbert wrote the words, um, stick close to your desks and never go to sea, and you all may be rulers of the Queen's Navy, everybody knew to whom he was referring. Indeed, the wretched W.H. Smith became known as Pinafore Smith, not very dignified for an important politician. Pinafore didn't do it all well to start with. Just after it opened, there was a phenomenal heat wave, which was popular with the public, but not with actors or the management. The takings fell so low that Gilbert and Sullivan thought they had their first flop. But Sullivan, who had conducted the uh, promenade concerts at Covent Garden at the time, put a selection of HMS Pinafore into one of the programs. The audience just adored it. Box office takings of London's Opera Comique Theatre uh, just hit the ceiling. HMS Pinafore had won her first victory in battle.
Yes, the roundest and the reddest Aye. beauty in all spit Where <laughs> am I? And round and rosy. Maybe, but I have dissembled well. <laughs> but Arky, my merry friend, I just never thought that beneath a gay and frivolous exterior there may lurk a canker worm, which is slowly but surely eating its way into one's very heart. No, I can't say I've ever thought that. Well, I've <laughs> thought it often. Yes, you look like it. What's the matter with a man? Isn't he well? Ach, never mind him. That's only poor Dick Dead. I say. It's a beast of a name, ain't it? Yeah. Dick, did I? Uh, <laughs> it's not a nice name. <laughs> and I'm ugly, ain't I? You are certainly uh, plain. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm three-quarter two, ain't I? You are rather triangular. <laughs> That's it. I'm ugly, and they hate me for it. For you all hate me, don't you? Uh, yeah. Well, Dick, Dick, we wouldn't have wanted to be hurt on any other fellow creature's feelings, but you can hardly expect a lady with a name like Dick Deadeye to be a popular character, can you, boy? No, no. But it's asking how much, isn't it? It is. From such a face and form as mine, the noblest sentiments sound like the black utterances of a deprived imagination. It's human nature. I'm resigned. But tell me, who's the youth with faltering feet, with difficulty bear him on his course? That is the smartest lad in all the fleet, Rafe Rackstraw. Rafe, the name, Rimmons,
of a kindly chorus, but choruses yield little consolation when we have pain and sorrow to be for us. I love and love, alas, above my station. He loves and loves, alas, above his station. Yes, yes, alas, it's much above his station. A bard of blushing beauty For whom proud nobles sigh And with each other vie To do her menial's duty To her duty A suitor lowly born With hopeless passion torn And poor beyond in has dared for her to pine at whose exalted shrine a world of wealth is sighing. A world of wealth is sighing. Unlearned he in aught save that which love has taught, for love had been his tutor. Oh, pity, pity, Captain's daughter, she and I, that lonely suitor. Oh, pity, pity me, the captain's daughter, she and I, that lonely Poor laddie, you've climbed too high. Our worthy captain's child wouldn't have anything to say to a poor chappy like you, would you, boys? No! No! Captain's daughters don't marry four masters. Exactly. Them sentiments of yours are a disgrace to human nature. I'm shocked. That's why I'm shocked. Say. Well, it's a strange anomaly that the daughter of a man who hails from the quarterdeck may not love another who lays out on the foreyard arm. For a man is but a man, whether he hoists his flag at the main truck or his slacks on the main deck. Ah, uh, it's a queer world. Dick Deadeye, I have no desire to press hardly on you, but such a revolutionary sentiment is enough to make an honest sailor shudder. Right, boys, our worthy captain has come on deck. Let us greet him as so worthy a seaman and so brave an officer deserves. My gallant crew, good morning. Sir, good morning. I hope you're all quite well. Quite well. And you, sir? I am in reasonable health and happy to meet you all once more. You do us proud, sir. The pinafore and the rifle captain too. You're very, very good, and be it understood, I command a right good crew. We're very, very good, and be it understood, he commands a right good crew. No related to appear, I can hand, even steer, or ship a sail for G. I've never known the quail at the fury of a gale, and I'm never, never sick at sea. What never? No, never. What never? Hardly ever. He's hardly ever sick at sea. And give three cheers and one cheer more for the hardy captain of the pin of four. And give three cheers and one cheer more for the captain of the pin of four. I do my best to 
satisfy you all. And you will quite content. You're exceedingly polite, and I think it only right to return the compliment. We're exceedingly polite, and you think it's only right to return the compliment. Bad language or abuse, I never, never use, whatever the emergency. Don't bother it, I may occasionally say, I never use a big, big D. What, never? No, never. What, never? Hardly ever. Hardly ever, so it's a big, big D. They give three cheers and one cheer more for the captain of the field of war. Sir, you are sad. The silent eloquence of yonder tear that trembles on your eyelash proclaims a sorrow far more deep than karma. Confide in me, fear not, I am a mother. Yes, little buttercup, I'm sad and sorry. My daughter Josephine, the fairest flower that ever blossomed on ancestral timber, is sought in marriage by Sir Joseph Porter, our Admiralty's first lord. But for some reason, she does not seem to tackle kindly to it. Oh, poor Sir Joseph, I know too well the anguish of a heart that loves but vainly. But see, here comes your most attractive daughter. I go farewell. A plump and pleasing person. I'm <laughs> 
Josephine, my child. <laughs> I grieve to see that you are afraid of melancholy. You should look your best today, for Sir Joseph Porter KCB will be here this afternoon to claim your promised hand. <laughs> oh, Father, your words cut me to the quick. Huh? I can esteem, reverence, venerate Sir Joseph, for he is a great and good man. But, oh, I cannot love him. My heart is already given. It is then as I feared. Given? And to whom? Not to some gilded lordling. No, Father. The object of my love is no lordling. Oh, pity me, for he is but a humble sailor on board your own ship. Impossible! It's true. Too true. A common sailor? Oh, Bye. I blush for the weakness that allows me to cherish such a passion. I hate myself when I think of the depths to which I have stooped and allow myself to think tenderly of one so ignobly born. But I love him. I love him. I love him. Oh, oh come, 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 my child. Let us talk this over. In a matter of the heart, I would not coerce my daughter. I attach but little value to rank or wealth. What? The line must be drawn somewhere. A man in that station may be brave and worthy, but at every step, he would commit solecisms that society would never, never pardon. Oh, I've thought of this night and day. I have a heart and therefore I love. But I am your daughter and therefore I am proud. Though I carry my love with me to the tomb, he shall never, never know it. You are my daughter after all. <laughs> ha! But see, Sir Joseph's barge approaches. Manned by twelve trusty oarsmen and accompanied by the admiring flotilla of sisters, cousins, and aunts that attend him wherever he goes. Ah, retire, my daughter. Retire to your cabin and take this, his photograph with you. It might help to bring you to a more reasonable frame. Vine. My own thoughtful father. Cheers, I'll lead the way. Hurrah, hurrah, hooray! 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 hooray. I am the 
monarch of the sea, the ruler of the Queen's navy, whose praise Great Britain loudly chants. And be are his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. And be are his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. His sisters and his cousins and his aunts. With an anchor here I ride. My bosom swells with pride. I snap my fingers at a fur man's tongue. And so do his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. And so do his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. His sisters and his cousins and his aunts. But when the breezes blow, I generally go below and seek the seclusion of the cabin grounds. And so do his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. And so do his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. And so do his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. His sisters and his cousins and his aunts. And my cousins and his aunts. I served a term as office boy to return his firm. I cleaned the windows and I swept the floor and I polished up the handle of the big front door. He polished up the handle of the big front door. I polished up that handle so carefully that now I'm the ruler of the Queen's Navy. He polished up the handle so carefully that now he is the ruler of the Queen's Navy. As office boy, I made such a mark that they gave me the post of a junior clerk. I served the writ with a smile so bland and copied all the letters in a big round hand. He copied all the letters in a big round hand. Copied all the letters in a hand so free that now I'm the ruler of the Queen's Navy. He copied all the letters in a hand so free that now he is the ruler of the Queen's Navy. As office boy, I made such a name that an article clerk I soon became. I wore clean collars and a brand new suit for the past examination at the Institute. For the past examination at the Institute. And I passed examination did so well for me that now I'm the ruler of the Queen's Navy. And past examination did so well for me that now he is the ruler of the Queen's Navy. Of legal knowledge I acquired to the grip, they took me into the partnership. And that junior partnership I ween was the only ship I ever had seen. Was the only ship he ever had seen. But that kind of ship so suited me that now I'm the ruler of the Queen's Navy. But that kind of ship so suited me that now he is the ruler of the Queen's Navy. I grew so rich that I was sent by a pocket borough into Parliament. I always voted at my party's call. Never thought of thinking for myself at all. Never thought of thinking for myself at all. I saw so little the reward had been my making in the world. He thought so little the reward had been my making in the world of the Queen's Navy. Now, landsmen all, whoever ye may be, if you want to rise, top of the tree, if your soul isn't fettered to an office stool, be careful to be guided by this golden rule. Be careful to be guided by this golden rule. Stick close to your desks and never go to sea. And you all may be rulers of the Queen's Navy. Stick close to your desks and never go to sea. And you all may be rulers of the Queen's What a clumsy fellow. Hmm. <clears throat> well, you have a remarkably fine crew here, Captain... Uh, c c uh, it's Corcoran, sir. Is it? Ah, oh, uh, I see. It oh. is a fine crew, Sir Joseph. Yes, yes. The British uh, seaman is a splendid fellow, uh, Captain uh, Codman. Uh, uh, Corcoran. Uh, oh, uh, ah. A splendid it's... fellow indeed, Sir Joseph. Yes, yes, indeed. Oh, yes. Uh, never forget, they are the bulwarks. The bulwarks of England's greatness. Do I have always considered mm. this, Joseph? So, I hope uh, there's no bullying of any kind, eh? No strong language of any kind? Oh, never, Sir Joseph. Uh, never? Well, hardly ever. They are an excellent crew and do their work uh, thoroughly without it, Sir uh, Joseph. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, well, don't patronize them, sir. Pray don't patronize them. No, certainly not, Sir Joseph. Mm. Remember that you are their captain is an accident of birth. And I can't allow these noble fellows to be patronized because an accident of birth has placed you above them and then below you. I'm the last person to insult a British sailor, Sir Joseph. You are the last person who did, huh? Captain Codman. It's Corcoran. D is it? Well, if you insist. Yes. Now, uh, 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 desire that splendid seaman there to step forward. <laughs> did that not that one? No. The other one. That one. Refract from. 
Three paces to the front. Mutt! If what? Uh, I beg your pardon, sir. I don't think I understand you. Obviously not. If you please. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> if you please. Uh, there we are. Well, my fine fellow, and you are a fine fellow, are you not? Yes, Your Honor. And a first rate seaman, I'll be bound. There's not a smarter topman in the Navy, Your Honor. Though I say it, you shouldn't. Who no, didn't? I did. You did what? Say it. What? You shouldn't? Well, you shouldn't have done so. Never mind, it doesn't matter, because it shows proper self respect. No more. Now tell me, um, can you dance a hornpipe? No, Your Honor. You can't? Well, every sailor should dance a hornpipe, even you. Never mind. I'll teach you one tonight, after dinner. Yes, and you. Now tell me, my fine fellow, and don't be frightened. Now, how does your captain treat you? A better captain, don't walk the deck, Your Honor. Oh, good. I like to hear you speak well of your commanding officer. Even if he doesn't deserve it. <laughs> yes. Now, I uh, uh, can you sing? I can hum a little, Your uh, Honor. Uh, what? Hum. Hum. Yes. Well, that's better than nothing. Mm, very well. Hum this. <laughs> it's a little ditty, a rather pretty little ditty, which I have composed uh, especially for the use of the Royal Navy. You see, it is designed to encourage independence of thought and action among the lower branches, you see, and to teach the principle that the British sailor is every man's equal, except mine, of yeah, course. Of course. Mm. <laughs> and now, uh, Captain... Cochrane! I was about to say that. Uh, May I uh, have a word with you, please, in private in your cabin? <laughs> on a matter, a subject uh, which is both uh, tender and uh, sentimental, you understand. I, I suggest. Mm. Yes. Well. Well. Mm -hmm. mm. Thank you. Bolson. In commemoration of this joyous occasion, see that extra grog is served out to the ship's company at seven bells. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Make fun. <laughs> if <laughs> what, Your Honor? If what? I don't think I understand you. If you please, Your Honor. What? Yes! The gentleman is quite right. If you please. If you please. Uh, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> For I hold that on the seas, the expression, if you please, a particularly gentlemanly tone in class. And so do his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. And so do his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. His sisters and his cousins and his records and my cousins and his aunts. Aye, Sir Joseph's a true gentleman, courteous and considerate to the very humblest. True! But we are not the very humblest. Sir Joseph has explained our true position to us. As he says, a British seaman is any man's equal, excepting his. And if Sir Joseph says that, is it not our duty to believe him? Aye! Down our old track. And so is he. He means well, but he don't know. When people have to obey other people's orders, equality's out of that question. Yeah. Oh. Nick, if you infuriate this ship's company too far, I can't answer for being able to hold them in. It's a disgrace, man. That's what it is. A disgrace! Yes. Yes. Messmates, my mind's made up. I'll talk to the captain's daughter and tell her like an honest man of the honest love I have for her. Yeah. Is not my love as good as another's? Yeah. Is not my heart as true as another's? Yeah. Have I not hands and eyes and ears and limbs like another? Yeah. True, I lack birth. Yeah, you've got a birth on board this very ship. <laughs> well said, I had forgotten that. Messmates, what do you say? Do you prove my determination? Uh, yeah. 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 Oh, I now, what is to be done with this hopeless lady? Here, let's sing him the song that Sir Joseph has kindly composed for us. Mm. Maybe it'll help to bring the poor lad to some sense. A British star is a soaring soul as free as a mountain bird. He's energetic, his 
should be ready to resist a dictatorial word. His nose his nose should pants, and his lips should curl, his chin should shame, and his brow should frown, his bosom should heave, and his heart should clutch, and his fist be ever ready for the knock out of Lord. so himself. But to me he seems tedious, fretful and dictatorial. Yet his must be a mind of no common order or he wouldn't dare to teach my dear father to dance a hornpipe on the cabin table. <laughs> Rafe Rackstraw. Aye, lady. No other than poor Rafe Rackstraw. Oh, how my heart beats. And why poor Rafe? I am poor in the essence of happiness, lady. Rich only in never-ending unrest. In me there meet a combination of antithetical elements which are at eternal war with one another. Driven hither by objective influences, thither by subjective emotions, wafted one moment into blazing day by mocking hope, plunged the next into the Cimmerian darkness of tangible despair. I am but a living ganglion of irreconcilable antagonisms. I hope I make myself clear, lady. Perfectly. His simple eloquence goes to my heart. Oh, if I dared. But no, the thought is madness. Dismiss these foolish fancies. They torture you, but needlessly. Oh. oh, come, make one effort. I will. One. Josephine! Sir! Aye, though Jove's armory were launched at the head of the audacious mortal whose lips, unhallowed by relationship, dared to breathe that precious word, yet would I breathe it once and then perchance be silent evermore. Josephine, in one brief breath I will concentrate the hopes, the doubts, the anxious fears of six weary months. Josephine, I am a British sailor and I love you. Sir, this audacity! Oh, my heart, my beating heart! This unwarrantable presumption on the part of a common sailor. Common? Oh, the irony of the word. Oh, sir, you forget the disparity in our ranks. I forget nothing, haughty lady. I love you desperately. My life is in your hands. I lay it at your feet. Give me hope, and what I lack in education and polite accomplishments, that I will endeavor to acquire. Drive me to despair, and in death alone I shall look for consolation. I am proud and cannot stoop to implore. I have spoken, and I wait your word. You shall not wait long. Your proffered love I haughtily reject. Go, sir, and learn to cast your eyes on some village maiden in your own poor rank. They should be lowered before your captain's daughter. <laughs>
have your way, unfeeling beauty. You speak and I obey, it is my duty. I am the lowliest tar that sails the water, and you, proud maiden, are my captain's daughter. Proud lady, have your way. You speak and I obey. My heart with anguish gone bows down before her. She laughs my love to scorn, yet I adore her. My heart with anguish gone bows down before her. She laughs my love to scorn, yet I Survive this overbearing, or live a life of mad despairing, my prophet love despised, rejected. No, no, it's not to be expected. Messmates, <laughs> ahoy, come here, come here. Aye, aye, my boy, watch it, watch it. No, tenants rain me like a neighbor, does she say? The maiden treats my suit with scorn, rejects my humble gift. My lady, she says I am ignobly born and cuts my hopes adrift. My lady, oh, cruel one, oh, cruel one. She's heard your suit. Oh, 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 yes, oh, 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 yes, oh, oh, yes, oh, oh, Slaves, her lady, she ho. Oh, oh. You lowly toilers of the waves, she spurns you all. I told you so. Shall we submit? Are we the slaves? 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 My leave of life I'm taking. Oh, my heart, my heart is breaking. When I am gone, oh, prithee tell the maid that as I died, I loved her well. Has hung his ensign high above, 
Captain's daughter, and you, the meanest slave that crawls the water. Is 
London went crazy about Pinafore. Barrel organs played the tunes, errand boys whistled them, society danced to, to them. Well, in those days, of course, there were no, um, no phonographs, records. Sheet music was big business. And the music stores sold thousands of copies every day. Then Pinafore Madness just broke out into the United States. It was just like an epidemic. Pirated versions of the opera were performed everywhere. One newspaper reported, at present there are 42 companies playing Pinafore about the country. Companies formed after 6 p.m. yesterday are not included. <laughs> but most of these versions were only crude imitations of the original. The orchestrations in particular were far inferior to Sullivan's impeccable score. And when the original London version of the show reached Broadway, <laughs> well, it opened at the Fifth Avenue Theater on uh, the 1st of December, 1879, the music sounded totally new and wonderful. Gilbert and Sullivan became top celebrities. And one judge in an after-dinner speech hoped that they would be brought before him uh, for being drunk and disorderly so that he might repay the pleasure Pinafore had given him by letting them off. <laughs> now, there are a hundred stories to tell about HMS Pinafore, but um, we must get back to the quarterdeck where our gallant Captain Corcoran is faced with many, many problems. And sad to tell, he threatens a court martial. To thee I sing, bright region of the heavens. Say, why is everything either at six? Or at sevens. Fair moon to thee I sing, bright region of the heavens.
sweetly he carols forth his melody to the unconscious moon. Of whom is he thinking? Of some high born beauty, it may be. Who oh, is poor little Buttercup that she should expect his glance to fall on one so lowly? And yet, if he knew, if he only knew. Ah, little Buttercup, still on board. That is not quite right, little one. <laughs> it would have been more respectable to have gone on shore thus. Oh, too, dear Captain. But the recollection of your sad, pale face seemed to chain me to the ship. Oh, I would fain see you smile before I go. Ah, little buttercup, I fear it will be long before I recover my accustomed cheerfulness. Oh, all misfortunes crowd upon me, and all my old friends seem to have turned against me. Oh, no, dear Captain. Not all. That were unjust to one. At least. True, for you are staunch to me. If ever I gave my heart again, methinks it would be to such a one as this. I am touched to the heart by your innocent regard for me. And were we differently situated, I think I could have returned it. But as it is, I fear I can never be more to you than a friend. I understand. You hold aloof from me because you are rich and lofty and I poor and lowly. But take care. The poor bumboat woman has gypsy blood in her veins, and she can read destinies. Destinies? There is a change in store for you. A change? Aye, be prepared. <laughs> Things are seldom what they seem. Skim milk masquerade as cream. High loaf parts as painted leathers. A jackdaw strapped in the peacock feathers. Very true. So they do. Black sheep dwell in every fold. All that glitters is not gold. Stalks turn out to be but logs. Bulls are but inflated frogs. So they be frequently. Drops the wind and stops the mill. Turbotty's ambitious brill. Gild the farthing if you will. Yet it is a farthing still. Yes, I know that is so. Though to catch a drip, I'm striving. It is shady, it is shady. I don't see it what you're driving, Mystic Lady, Mystic Lady. Stuck the beaks and talking, he's stealing. That's a mystical lady, he's stealing. Miracular revealing. Yes, I know that is so. Though I'm anything but clever, I could talk like that forever. Once a cat was killed by care, only brave deserve the fair. Very true, so they do. Wink is often good as nod, spoils the child who spares the rod. Thirsty lambs run foxy dangers. Dogs are found in many mangers. Frequently, I agree. Poor cat, the chestnut snatches. Worn out garments show new patches. Only count the chick that hatches. Men are grown up, catchy catches. Yes, I know. That is so. Go to cat by drift, he's driving. I'll dissemble, I'll dissemble. Is it what I'm Let it tremble, let it tremble. So amazed if you will not have borrowed, he will learn the truth of his sorrow. Here today and gone tomorrow. Yes, I know. That is so. I understand you, boy. I understand you. Let it tremble, let it tremble. Let it tremble tomorrow. Yes, I know. That is so. Oh. <sighs> Incomprehensible as her utterances are, I nevertheless feel that they are dictated by a sincere regard for me. But to what new misery is she referring? Time alone can tell. Ah, Captain Corkscrew. Corcoran, sir. Please don't argue. Look, I am much disappointed in your daughter. In fact, I do not think she will do. She will do, Sir Joseph? I'm afraid not. Although I've urged my suit with as much eloquence as is consistent with an official utterance, 
I have done so hitherto and thitherto, too, without success. Now, how do you account for that? Really, Sir Joseph, I can hardly say. Uh, uh, Josephine is, of course, sensible of your condescension. Well, naturally, she would be, yes. It could be. Your exalted rank dazzles her. Ah, you think it likely? I can hardly say. She, but she is a modest girl, and, of course, her social posi position is far below your own. True, true. It may be she feels she is not worthy of you. Ah, yes. That is really a very sensible suggestion. It displays a more knowledge of human nature than I'd given you credit for. Uh, uh, she, she, she comes, she comes. Uh, Sir Joseph, uh, if you would kindly reason with her and assure her officially that it is a standing rule of the Admiralty that love levels all ranks. Her, her, her respect for an official utterance might induce her to look upon your offer in its proper light. Yes. It is not unlikely. I will adopt your suggestion. Mm, but softly as she comes. Now, be quiet, you yes. understand? Oh. And we will withdraw and watch our opportunity. I told you to be quiet! Every side. <laughs> Fume and clothes are hanging out all day are drying. With one cracked looking glass to see your face in, and dinner served up in a pudding basin.
has been represented to me by him that you are appalled by my exalted rank. Well, now, I desire to convey to you officially my, uh, my assurance that if your hesitation is indeed uh, uh, attributable uh, to this uh, circumstance, uh, it is uncalled for. Oh, then your lordship is of opinion that married happiness is not inconsistent with discrepancy in rank. I'm officially of that opinion. Uh, that the high and the lowly may be truly happy together, uh, provided that they truly love one another. I desire to convey to you officially my opinion that love is a platform upon which all ranks meet. I thank you, <laughs> Sir Joseph. Not at all, not at all. I did hesitate, but I shall hesitate no longer. Good. <laughs> he little thinks how eloquently he has pleaded his rival's cause. <laughs> Mind the why and wherefore love can level rank, and therefore, though his lordship's nature's mighty, though stupendous be his prey, though her tastes are mean and flighty, and her fortune poor and plain. Ring the merry bells on lordship, rain the air with warmly wild for the union of his lordship and a humble captain's child for a humble captain's daughter. For a gallant captain's daughter. And a lord who rules the water. And a tar who plows the water. Let the air with joy be laden when the songs they air about All the union of a maiden with the man who holds her love Never mind the why and wherefore, love can revel rank and therefore Though your nautical relation in my sick but scarcely pass Though you occupy a station in the lower middle class Ring the merry bells on fortune, rain the air with warbling wild With the two of his lordships, with the humble captain's child For a humble captain's daughter For a gallant captain's daughter And a lord who rules the water And a tar who knows the water Let the air with joy be laden, rend the song the air above For the union of a maiden with the man who wants her love Rend the air with warbling wild For the union of his lordship With a humble captain's child Or a humble captain's daughter Or a gallant captain's daughter And a lord oh. And a tar who blows the water Rend the air with joy be laden Rend the merry bells on board Rend the air with joy be laden For her union with his lordship Rend the air with joy be laden For the man who owns her love Rend the song the air delighted at the happy result of your eloquence. Your argument was unanswerable. My dear Captain Cockeye. Uh, Corcoran. Please don't be tiresome. Uh, it is one of the happiest uh, characteristics of Abloy's country uh, that an official utterance is invariably regarded as unanswerable. Mm. Uh, at last. At last. At last, my fondest hopes are to be crowned. My only daughter, Josephine, is to be crowned. The bride, bride of a cabinet minister. The prospect is Elysian. It's Elysian. Elysian. Ah! Captain. Dick Deadeye, you here? No. Oh, don't shriek from me, Captain. I'm unpleasant to look at, and me names again me. Oh. But I ain't as bad as I seem. Uh, what would you with me? I've come to give thee warning. Warning? Ah, warning. Ah. Listen. Kind Captain, I've important information. Sing a the kind commander that you are. About a certain intimate relation, see the merry maiden and the tar. 
The merry, merry maiden, the merry, merry maiden, sing hey, the merry maiden and the top. Good fellow in conundrums you are speaking, sing hey, the mystic sailor that you are. The answer to them plainly I am seeking, sing hey, the merry maiden and the top. The merry, merry maiden, the merry, merry maiden, sing the merry maiden and the dog. My captain, your young lady is a sign. Sing a the simple captain that you are. This very night with cracks for to be fly. Sing a the merry maiden and the dog. The merry, merry maiden, the merry, merry maiden, the merry, merry maiden, and the tar. Good fellow, you have given timely warning. Sing hey, the thoughtful sailor that you are. I'll talk to Master Rackstraw in the morning. Sing hey, the cat o' nine tails and the tar. The merry cat the nine tails, 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 the merry they're foiled. 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 <laughs> Carefully on tiptoe, stealing, breathing gently as we may. Every step with caution, feeling we will softly slip away. Silently, it was the cat. It was, it was a cat. Yeah, right, it was the cat. Pull ashore in fashion, saying, Hive and will do break the fair. For the clergyman is ready to use and up and be fair. Why, what was that? Silently, again the cat. It was again the cat. All right, it was the cat. Every step with caution, dear. You were soft, you steal away. Every step with caution, feet in. Oh, 
chef has said it, and is greatly to his credit, that he is an Englishman. That he is an Englishman. Or he might have been a Russian, a French or Turk or Trojan, or perhaps Italian. Or perhaps Italian. But in spite of all temptations to belong to other nations, he remains an Englishman. He remains an to any British part. I try to speak with moderation, but you have gone too far. I'm very sorry to disparage your humble foremast lad, to sink your captain's child in men. Well, damn it, it's too bad. Oh, yes, damn it, it's too bad. Oh, yes, damn it, it's too bad. What did you please? Did you please? Oh, the monster, oh, the bear. Don't go, please. Don't go, please. My pain and my distress, I find it, it is not easy to express. My amazement, my surprise, you may learn from the expression in my eyes. My lord, one word, if facts were not before you, the word was injudicious, I allow. Oh. But here, my explanation, I implore you, and you will be indignant who I vow. I will hear of no defense. Ha! Attempt none, if you're sensible. This world of evil sense is wholly indefensible. Don't fidget. Go, Ribble, get you hence. To your cabin, who is celerity? This, this is the consequence of an advised prosperity. This is the consequence of ill advised prosperity. For I'll teach you all alone to refrain from language strong, for I haven't any sympathy with ill-bred talk. No more happy sisters, 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 no more happy s
Sir Joseph, for I love him tenderly. Oh, pray don't, madam. I shall, I shall teach this presumptuous mariner to discipline his affections. Uh, have we by chance a tiny dungeon on board? We have. Yes, they have. <laughs> Shut up. Now, load him in irons. No, not him. Him. Now, load him in irons and show him below. Take him there at once. Oh, Oh, that's it. Farewell, my own, light of my life, farewell. For climb unknown, I go to a dungeon cell. A bone, a bone, I'll pick with the sail of hell. Let him be shown at once to his dungeon cell. Secret I have to tell. Wide will be thrown the door of his dungeon cell. Again, it is not easy to express my amazement, my surprise. Again, you may discover in my eyes how terrible the aspect of his eyes. upon your loss, you lay much to rest. A long concealed crime. I Confess. <laughs> uh, many years ago, when I was young and charming, as some of you may know, I practiced baby farming. Oh, now this is most alarming. When she was young and charming, she, she practiced baby farming. Many years ago, to tender babes I nursed. One was of low condition, the other a uh, crust, a regular patrician. Now this is a position. One was of low condition, the other a patrician. Is my car. However, could I do it? I mixed those children up, and not a creature knew it. However, could you do it? Someday, no doubt, you'll rue it. Although no creature knew it so many years ago. In time, his little way forsook his foster mother. The well born babe was a wraith. They met their foster mother, the one was raised a brother, our captain was the other, for many years ago. Understand then uh, that Rafe and the captain were exchanged yes. in childhood's happy hours. <laughs> oh, I see. Now let me get this absolutely correct. Now, 
Reef, who was was the captain. No, he wasn't. No, he was, of course he wasn't. No, Reef is the, yes, ah, now he is. But he wasn't the star though, because in the first, was he born? Yes, of course he was born. born. But the captain wasn't. Yes, he was just, together. And of course you changed them and the captain, uh, oh, I understand precisely. Well, that's the idea I intended to convey mm. officially. And very well you have conveyed it, Miss Buttercup. Oh, I got your honour. <laughs> yes, I, where's she going? Oh, yes, well, there you are. Yeah, uh, she must be exhausted. Yes. Have a nice nap. Very well. Let them both be brought before me now. My father, a common sailor? It is sad. Oh, well, this is sort of a singular occurrence. Uh, my uh, compliments to, to both of you. Uh, desire that splendid seaman uh, to be brought forward. Corcoran, three paces to the front, march. If what? I don't quite understand. If you please. What? Yes. Ah, yes, the gentleman's quite right. If you please. If you please. That's better. Hmm. Well, my fine fellow, because you are a fine fellow, are you not? Yes, now it appears apparently uh, that you are Rafe, and Rafe is the captain. So it seems, Your Honour. Yes. Well, of course, you appreciate that this, uh, after this change, shall we put it in your condition, a marriage to your daughter uh, would be out of the question. Oh, don't say that, Your Honour. I've just said it, haven't I? But love levels all ranks. Oh, well, it does uh, to a considerable extent, but it does not level it as much as all of that. Now, sir, take her and treat her kindly. Oh, bliss! Oh, oh, rapture. Oh, rapture. Oh, rapture. Oh, bliss. Oh, sorry, sorry. Sad my lot and sorry. I, I cannot live alone. Oh, fear nothing. While I live, I'll not desert you. Yeah, no, thank you very much. Oh, don't, oh, don't bother. Oh, I'll soothe and comfort your declining days. Yeah, oh, very well, then. Tomorrow morn, our vows shall all be plighted. Three loving pairs on the same day. The United Captain of the pin of all, and the rival captain too. And though before my fall I was captain of you all, I'm a member of the crew. And though before his fall he was captain of us all, he's a member of the crew. I shall marry with a wife in my humble rank of life, and you, my own, are she. I must wander to and fro, but wherever I may go, I shall never be untrue to thee. But never, no, never. What never? Hardly ever. Hardly ever be untrue to thee. Give three cheers and one cheer more for the former captain of the pin of four. Give three cheers and one cheer more for the captain of the pin of four. For he loves little buttercup, little buttercup, though I could never tell why. But still he loves buttercup. Oh, little buttercup, sweet little buttercup, I. Oh, he loves little buttercup, dear little buttercup, though I could never tell why. But still he loves buttercup, dear little buttercup, sweet little buttercup, I. And the monarch of the sea, and when I've married thee, I'll be true to the devotion which my love implies. Then goodbye to your sisters and your cousins and your aunts, especially your cousins whom you reckon up by cousins. Then goodbye to your sisters and your cousins and your aunts, especially your cousins whom you reckon up by cousins and your aunts. Oh, yeah.